since I showed you how I was preparing the little panels, it's probably a good idea to show you what becomes of them. So on the idea of variety, uh, variety is a big key because I wouldn't be able to make so many different kinds of things. Well, I wouldn't be able to make so many, so many things, period, if it wasn't for the variety of approaches I use. That variety keeps everything fresh. So let's see what the variety is and let's see what these look like. So this is a little pencil drawing done on location from the front seat of my car with uh, one or two pencils, mechanical pencils, just like this. I use that and that, that there's a harder lead in this one. Um, they're on the thin acid free sketching paper and then they're lightly fixed so they won't smudge. Light layer of uh, archival fixative. Then they're trimmed and you haven't seen how this panel has been prepared completely. I only showed you a little bit of how I'm preparing it. But when this panel is completely prepared, uh, they're let, um, there's the, let them sit for a day or two to cure, let the paint cure. And then this is glued on here. I think I showed you how to do that. Yes, I did. And then there's two layers of thin varnish that goes over top of this. So you're seeing a little bit of a shine there. You're seeing what the surface is like. Then a magnet is put down here. Then the signature is put here and the, the signature is covered with a little bit of varnish too so it doesn't smear. So on the idea of what kind of variety do I apply to this? Actually to these small things and to the larger things too, but it's, it's especially noticeable perhaps in these small things because there's so many things I try. And this is just a few that I grabbed off the fridge to to see what the variety is. So I'd be sitting in my car perhaps for 20 minutes, drawing continuously, looking out, looking out the windows and drawing. Sometimes I sit in a chair, just get out and sit in a little compact chair that I have. I do it that way too. So there's perceptual drawings in pencil. There's that. There are a lot of things like this. Well, not a lot, but some. There were some indie ink drawings uh, made on antique book paper. There's collage in there. There's a few layers. So it's actually collaged. It's cut material that is then collaged right on this board. That's different than that. That's collaged only after the whole thing. Different than this, which is collaged only after the whole thing is made. This is collaged right on the piece. Same finishing procedures working strictly from invention. I'm not looking at anything as I make these. There are lots like this, which are little gouaches. Uh, again, I'm in my car. Usually it seems I do three, three in one sitting. So I'll drive to one place, do one. Um, neat thing about gouaches is the paint doesn't dry up. Well, it dries up, but it opens up again. So you don't have to worry about cleanup. So I'll drive to one place, complete one, then drive to another place, complete another, and drive to a third place, complete another. That might that whole procedure might take, uh, I don't know, an hour and a half. And so that's about it. That's I don't have more energy than that. It's just, you know, you can work longer, but these things take sort of everything out of you because you're com completely um, focused when you're making them. So they start with a small, uh, quick drawing in pencil, in this pencil, and then gouache layers, usually working from warm and light to cool and dark over top. And yeah, I really like making these. There's lots and lots of those. There are strange things like this, which are portraits. This was on heavier paper. This is something that I rescued and put on here. I wasn't making it specifically as a magnet image. Uh, this is gouache, and there are lots of portraits. Uh, a head, like an invented head. Um, sometimes I'll just make things up. Sometimes things will be virtually doodles, as this was. So an invented head, not looking at anything, just sort of making it up as I go along. These were also cropped after the fact. I didn't even have the size set. I'd sort of just draw on a sheet of paper, paint on a sheet of paper, knowing that it'd be small and knowing that I would use it probably for this later, and then I would crop crop to it. <clears throat> there are landscapes like this, which are gouache, 
again on paper, just that thin paper, but not from observation, in studio, from um, sort of thinking, imagination, invention, not looking at anything as I make it. Maybe they're often from the day's memories. They're often from the mood of the day. Uh, I am trying to match something, but it's it's difficult to say with too much um, more specific content what I'm trying to match. I'm trying to match a certain kind of mood that I felt that day or at a certain time of day. Then there are ones like this, which are cut papers of which I have thousands of these papers, which I use for collage, use them for a variety of things. And sometimes I'll just doodle on them with my leftover paint. This is made by cropping into such a doodle. So I'm sort of always on the lookout for things that I can use. And so that's that kind of an image. It's another gouache on location. I like very often in these, I'll try to preserve some of the pencil work so that it shows as very fine information as opposed to large information. So the pencil is never really covered up completely. And you can see what the finish looks like, if I maybe pull that a little closer, with actually two to four layers. It's more, more closely, it'll be four layers around here and two layers in the center here of well, first of all, one layer of that GAC 100 primer that I showed you, then two layers of um, satin latex white paint, and one more. I like the fact that these are never overthought. They're sort of made on the spot. They're not over worried. So very often, they're not sort of harnessed into shape at the end. They're kind of left. And with that quick leaving come a lot of interesting surprises that I really enjoy. I like the fact that I left that wash. Very often in these two, there'll be a wash, a warm wash underneath, on top of which other things are worked, like that more opaque china white. And that blue gets its character by seeing some of that pink underneath. And that's from the first layer of pink that's there. Little graphic elements, little line elements are left to show. Always in every one, probably, can't make a rule of these things, but probably, more often than not, you're going to see this business of where is the extreme dark, where is the middle, and where is the extreme light. And those things are going to be balanced in some way. And you're going to see a balance between where is the extreme large, where is the middle size thing, where is the small thing. You're going to see that because... It creates excitement, it creates tension, and also because the world just does seem to be composed that way naturally. When we, um, die, when, we, when we negotiate our way around the world, we're constantly looking at that kind of uh, basic division. So that is them. I don't know how many I've produced of these over the years. And it, the series, it is a series. I like working in series. A series is just something you start and there seem to be, never seems to stop. There are many done in that um, manner or form. I don't know how many of these I've done, but it doesn't seem to be, the series doesn't seem to be slowing down in any way. And there are, I don't know, hundreds? There are hundreds. I don't know if there's thousands yet, but there definitely are hundreds. And... They keep leaving, which I'm happy that they do, and they go all over the world.